5.1 we have a um, Taupo Rehabilitation, Myro Street uh, Rehabilitation. We have uh, Roading Manager, Mr Dennis Lewis. Good afternoon, Dennis. Good afternoon, Your Worship, Councillors. I've um, got an agenda item here for um, delegation of authority to the CE and Mayor to accept a tender uh, for some work on Meadow Street. It's a uh, rehab of the pavement there, about 450 metres in length um, in the middle of that street. Um, the tender's closed on Friday, so they're currently being evaluated. What I can advise Council is we received four tenders. Um, the pricing of those tenders is within the engineer's estimate that's reported in the report, and it's also within the, in the budget that we have available. OK, so the only difference here, Dennis, we haven't... Um we haven't selected the tender here. No, yet. we're still no. undertaking that um, evaluation process at oh, the moment. Yeah, is that is will that come back to us, or are you seeking delegated no, we're seeking, authority? We're seeking to delegated sign that authority. Okay. We'd like to get on with this project as soon as possible, um, so right. that we can get the majority of it built before the winter. Yeah, good as gold. Okay, thanks very much, Dennis. Any questions of Dennis uh, uh, on Myro Street, uh, Councillor Body? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Uh, firstly, the that that's the best way to describe it. What are you actually putting on the road to solve the problem? Recently you did Lake with Terrace and some comments were made about the longevity of that that ceiling. So is that the same ceiling that's going to go on this particular piece of Myra Street? Um, the pavement is designed specific to the type of traffic we anticipate um, and again with the seal coat, the type of traffic. So um, Miro Street is quite heavily industrialised. Um, the pavement depth is determined by what we think or what we forecast is going to happen over the life of the pavement. And so that tends to um, lead to the design and the final outcome of that pavement. Thank you. And just a quick follow up. So this money will be coming from the renewals on the transport. Is it That's correct. Okay, thank you. Very good. Any other questions of Mr Lewis? I'm sure the um, Myro Street will be ready for that to happen. The business is up there. It's, it's quite a significant carriageway, 5,500 vehicles a day. Yes. And um, as you say, uh, constructed in 1964, no doubt we've done some. This is probably the most major works we've done for quite some time there. So good news. All yes. right. Any other questions of Mr Lewis? Could I have a mover, please? Uh, thank you, Councillor Taylor. Seconded by Councillor Leonard that... Um, we give um, um, the authority to select the best tender and the resolution as pointed out there. All those in favour, please say aye. It's against. Carried. Thank you, Dennis. Are you the next one, too? Oh, sorry. Mike. Good afternoon, Mike. Um, <coughs> we have uh, contract number um, 1920, Mangakino Sewer Relining. 2020 and 2021. Good afternoon, Michael. Good afternoon, David and councillors. Uh, yes, this is a, a relining project for sewer in Mangakino. Some of you were here for the first phase of this project. So, um, for those that weren't, we did a lot of um, condition assessment of the sewers in Mangakino over years, and they've been known to be in poor condition for a long time. Um, a lot of um, failures in the network. And so we undertook a plan to do a lot of relining work, which is, covers about 60% of the network. Uh, we have two stages. The first stage was completed a couple of years ago. This is the second and final stage of major relining work. Um, and the recommendation is um, to award the contract uh, to Interflow New Zealand um, for 1.6 million. And the work would take place between sort of April and October of this year. Very good, Michael. I presume, were they the previous tenderers that did the first part? Or? No, they were separate, different contractor this time. Okay, you don't see any No, this is a big, yet? big, well Straight known, forward. reputable contractor. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Mack? No. I thought you were going like that. <laughs> I was too smart. <laughs> Councillor Guy and then Councillor Park. Thanks. Sorry. Yeah, 
So 18.5 kilometres is the entirety of the network of Mangakino, and we've, of that 18.5, we found about 60% of it needs relining, and so that 60% was broken up into two stages, and this is the second stage. Very good. Um, Councillor Park. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Just um, the tender is for 1.6, and the yep. project was estimated at 1.4. Yep. Where is the extra 200k coming from? Basically, we have to rejiggle our other projects, um, and this is project is going to span over two financial years. Um, so some of it's coming from this year's renewal money, some from next year's, and there'll be some projects that we may defer or okay. delay. But also the way we've done renewals is some of the renewals are planned renewals, like this one, um, the stuff we're doing in Takanu with the Rising May, and then there's reactive renewals. So there's a portion, of, there's a bit of float in there. Um, some stuff we know, some stuff we don't, but. Um, to fit within budgets, we'll probably start some other stuff a bit later next year. Thank you. Very good. Through Through Council body. So effectively, half the renewal budgets will be used on this to the financial end of June. Yes. And and will what what's left in that budget be carried over to complete? How does that work? Yes, that's right. But we expect that we'll utilise all of this year's renewal budget pretty close. To so the three million would probably go this year. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yep. Very good. Any other questions uh, of our <coughs> investment into maintenance uh, or you know, renewals out at Mankino? Um, these things don't come cheaply, so um, uh, but uh, you know, it's, it's it's work that needs to be done. So well done, Tom. Thank you to you and your team. Um, any other questions, for Tom or Dennis? No, Michael. Sorry, jeez, I knew I'd get it wrong. Something like. That. Sorry about that, Mike. Um, do I have a mover, please, for that? Are we appointed to reline limited. Um, who's, so, who's sorry moved? Councillor Body, seconded by Councillor Taylor. All those in favour, please say aye. Those against? Carried. Thank you very much, Michael. Right, 5.3, Kittle Drive, Napier Road, Aerosmith intersection. Uh, Your Worship, yeah. I'd like to introduce Brian Hicks. Who, uh, Bryson, sorry, actually, yeah. um, working for Clear's team. Clear, where are you? Thank you, Dennis. And Clear, would you like to come forward yeah. too? Clear, can Bryson, take, good afternoon, Clear Bryson. Can take my seat. Welcome. Good afternoon. And uh, good afternoon, Clear. Right. Um, afternoon, Your Worship and yeah. councillors. Um, this agenda item, before I hand over to Bryson to talk you through it, it's basically um, an agenda item that was requested for in the last council meeting for us to go away and do some an analysis on um, different intersection treatments for Kittle Drive and Arrowsmith um, and we, this agenda is basically to um, advise you that we have completed the report or <coughs> consultants Stantec have completed the report um, and have provided us some options so it's basically um, now requesting some unbudgeted funds to carry on with our investigations. Very good. Okay, thanks very much, Claire. Any questions, Claire, just at this initial stage before Bryson gets in? Councillor Mack. So just because I'm new to this one, um, when they put this new, um, if you like, uh, intersection in, we must have already done all the different options for that setup or not? Like we didn't look at roundabouts or anything like that when we put this one in? Uh, through the chair, um, a safety audit and peer review were, was undertaken um, by NZTA and their consultants um, and identified a number of recommendations. Roundabout was one of those recommendations, however um, the funding that NZTA provided for the um, intersection didn't cover a roundabout at that stage. So it didn't even, for the design of a roundabout, it didn't even do that? Like, like you know when you go in and you look at it, I assume you go in and look at lights and roundabouts, etc. Do you just talk about it and then just decide that there's no budget to even, you know, like come to us with a roundabout as an example, or do you have to wait and actually go out and then cost a roundabout? Am I making clear? No. The roundabout was costed, um, yep. which is what was sitting in our long-term plan for 20, mm, 26, 27 year. Um, this was the most cost effective and uh, 
rec the, the recommendation that was going to allow children and cyclists to actually get through that intersection was safe. I suppose, yeah, so what I'm trying to say is that the roundabout was costed, but no designs were done for one. Is that what you're saying? Uh, we do have, through the chair, we do have um, roundabout designs. However, the design that we had, the roundabout design we currently have was designed for an NZTA state highway roundabout, not a local road roundabout. That's what I was talking about. Okay, cool. Thank you. Cool. Okay, uh, Councillor Westman. I, I suppose just the confusion uh, for some of our the new councillors, particularly me, is you've got you've already committed in a long term plan in twenty twenty six to do another option. So it was like this one was always gonna fail and I still can't get my head around that. Clear. It was a, a possible. We put it in there as a possibility if this one didn't work. Is correct. Yes and no. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So, so have we answered your question, uh, All I can say um, through yeah, Mr. Chairman is that it was a deliberate decision of council at the time. So, um, so obviously the the proposal as was implemented was one that. Um, that had come up, been through the peer review process from, from NZTA, remembering that the changeover roads was happening at about that same time. Um, I think council laws at that time were clear that um, they just they thought that a roundabout was going to be a better option, and so that's why they um, were wanting to put some money in for a roundabout. But this option, as, as what's been put in place, was fully funded by NZTA, and so and the experts at the time, the NZTA commissioned experts, um, recommendation was that it was the best option, hence that's why they were paying for it. So the decision of council was let's put it in, give it a go, see how it happens, but still have this roundabout money in the budget in case it doesn't. Um, in the knowledge that a lot of the work that was required to make the changes leading up to that priority change wouldn't be wasted work leading into a roundabout going in, into place anyway. So that was my recollection of sitting through those conversations. Councillor Taylor? Just a question regarding the budget estimates on page 67 of our agenda, it's, it's the 1.6 million. Is that part of the consultant's report or is that in-house work from us? So the co consultant gave us uh, an estimate, but um, because this is at concept level, we just, you know, we don't actually know, so we refer to as a range, um, just in case something does happen, you know, if we do find some ambiguities in geotech stuff yeah. in future de detailed design. So I just want to make sure we're talking about the same page. So this is a quite detailed breakdown, including design works, design and investigation professional fees, 85,000, MSQA professional fees, 85,000, and so on. So is that, have you got that page open there? Yes, that's in the, that's in the, um, Stantex report at the in the appendix. Yep. Okay. Um, so that's that's the uh, estimate at concept level. So there's still a whole heap of unknowns with that estimate. Um, and you can see by there's a contingency line item at the bottom of over yes, three hundred thousand. So that, that just shows how much they they we really don't know what the cost is. Well, we have an idea what the cost is going to be, but. It hasn't been finalised and needs to go through detailed design to, to nail that down further. So I guess my question is, given that NZTA have done quite a bit of analysis on this, and given that there was uh, an earlier um, assessment or report done, which, and I guess I'm having a shot at the consultants who've done this report, did not refer to that report in their subsequent, this report we've now got, um, I'm just a bit mystified as to why we would need $170,000 in professional fees just to even get to the starting line. Um, the, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Claire, but uh, the report that Opus did, or the, the previous design, was at concept level for the roundabout, and it was an 80k speed limit roundabout, if, uh, which is not what the speed environment is now. Sure. Therefore, it's, it's a high speed, large roundabout, and it's, it doesn't really match to what is in this report. Um, it's, it's a very different solution for a very different problem, really. Okay. Councillor Rankin. 
I am assuming that we'll be telling NZTA in no uncertain terms that they gave us the wrong advice, because this is just a big waste of money. I mean, it's been a disaster, and now we have to pay to fix it. You know, we chose it in good faith, taking their advice, and you can't help but believe that their advice was based on a cost imperative. I. I don't know how they could have got it so wrong. But do we go back and say, this has been a disaster? Uh, through the Chair, we are working with um, NZTA at the moment, um, looking at different options and different funding um, subsidy rates for so the intersection. So they may contribute? That's right. Councillor Mack. Oh. Sorry, so again, look, looking at this, we budgeted for the roundabout according to this, but when you look at the line above it, it says there were two short lifted op listed options. One is the signals, obviously, and the other is the roundabout, but the signals, it says, is actually better for pedestrians and cyclists. So why would we put a roundabout in that could then be a problem for cyclists and pedestrians, and we have the same issue we've got now, which is people get hit? Uh, through the chair, we will be um, doing a, a workshop with councillors next week, which we will be talking through the different options, the pros and cons. Um, this is not to decide on the actual treatment option. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Um, Bryson, did you want or uh, Bri do you want to complete anything here? So what we're just talking about today is the appetite to go forward and perhaps with the possible change in getting the money to do this. Is that correct? So, so we're, we're asking for unbudgeted expenditure for to begin a detailed design and then the rest of the money put forward for the final solution to be put into the annual plan for 2021. Um, we're also we're going to NZTA and asking if, if, if this is passed, we'll go to NZTA and ask what they can do and to help us, um, and or the other option is to, to leave the long term plan as it is and keep the budget in for the 20, 26, 27, and 27, 28 years. Right. So, so I, uh, I guess the clarification around the room is that this money you need today to do this design, definitely we have not done that before with previous consultants and all that sort of thing. It's it's, it's work that needs to be, it needs it would, to be done. It would be, be a new design, um, especially for the type of environment that it is now. So the designs done before were for an NZTA type level road that was focused on a higher speed and, and the um, vehicle movements. Yeah. But, uh, I guess the question goes, they always knew this was going to go back to a local road, so I don't know why they... Yeah, but I suppose the speed limit's a different thing. Yeah. 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 Okay, Councillor Mack. Sorry. <laughs> ah. Uh, sorry, just at, the, just at the workshop then, you will have a costing for lights, assuming that's the way we decide to go. Because at the moment, if we've got a workshop and it's just about a roundabout, then we've just got a roundabout. Whereas this states that pedestrians and cyclists, uh, cyclists and walkers, would be in more advantage with lights. So. I would like to look at both options, obviously. Through but the chair, that is the... Sorry, boss. <laughs> yeah, through yeah. the chair. That, that is, that is yeah. what the intention is of the workshop. Yes. Yeah. Discuss both options. And you'll have a costing for lights. So yes. Correct. The costing's in there now. So if you look at um, the options in the paper, um, and without... Uh, we go to page 33. So the... Um, without getting into the details now, because the workshop will be where you decide it, the roundabout um, 1.6 to 1.8 and then the um, signals 1.5 to 1.7. Um, I guess with the proviso that the signals, as it says in the report, the signals will have ongoing, maintain, higher ongoing operational maintenance costs. Councillor Park? Yep, through the Chair, I'd like to move recommendations one and two. Um, safety is definitely the priority. I've got huge concerns about children um, on bikes and walking through the intersection, so yeah, I therefore would like to move those. Okay, thank you, Councillor Park. Anyone else want to talk? Uh, Councillor Westman? Uh, I'm just confused why it'd be really helpful to have the workshop before we vote on this would be a comment I'd make. We'd have a better understanding before we put our hand up to spend 1.6 or whatever million. I guess through you, Mr Chair, the, 
the thinking here is this from timing perspective if you if you believe that the status quo isn't isn't the right option um, so you, we so if you get past the fact that you feel that something has to happen um, then this is allowing the cost or the, the money to go in there in terms of the design and then into the annual plan for whatever that is um, the workshop that you have will enable that decision to be made but it will still be within that that ambit if you like so then what goes through the annual plan will be enough for that so it's, it's allowing the process to continue at the quickest possible time essentially yeah, in so a perfect so world it is. In a perfect world you go the other way, but just from a timing perspective. Sorry, through the chair, just to add to that, you know, yes, in a perfect world we would have done it that way, but we've been asked to bring something back to this uh, council meeting from the issues that we've been all talking about for a while. So we've just tried to maintain that flow. What this does allow is it allows that budget to be set aside, um, and the treatment option, regardless of the budget, will cover either treatment option that we can discuss on um, next week in the workshop. The other thing is what I might do is just take five minutes um, of that workshop and just explain through a process of concept through to design through to tender and what effect it has on our estimating. So it's just a, a quick five, ten minute discussion on that as well, which might help clarify some of the questions. Cool. Councillor Body, can you just make a uh, work out? So far we've been told later in the day that it's been funded by NZTA. Now we started with 100 grand, went to 159, it's now 180. Is that fully funded by NZTA? No, 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 no. Okay. Ms. Sh Ms. Charland has quite clearly said that she's in negotiations and talking to them, but there's no guarantees on anything. Well, at the last meeting when this came up, we were told NZTA was paying for it. No, 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 no. incorrect. I know, and that was the question. Uh, well, I'm going to check, check uh, that. I've been confused, Councillor. I think yeah. um, the I'm conversation confused. was that NZTA paid for the previous, for the current treatment. So what's there now, NZTA, sorry, so we had that you had said that was this. That's exactly what I'm talking about. So are they going, going to fund anything further? And what I find interesting is that when you read the document for consultation, that, well, the document that we got, they talk about the auto roads in Australia. Well, you can't get into that site because I'm not a council. They talked about a 22 metre diameter roundabout. That's the size of Jardin Mole, less than about a metre and a half. So what are the true costings? At the moment, I'm not prepared to vote on any more money being spent. I'd rather leave it as it is until we actually get those concrete figures. OK. Um, uh, Ms Shallon, just to... Uh, I, the, the, the existing intersection was fully funded by NZTA? Cor correct. correct, up to $100,000 which was allocated for that intersection. Yep. Um, yes, that was fully fully funded, cool. so 100% funded by NZTA. Okay. 180000 so far. Yep. Yep. Up the 100000 was NZTA, the overrun is actually from the additional treatment that we've had to do since, since the implementation. Funded so by? The fund, it's 50%, 51%. Uh, 51 Cool. All right, it's been moved by Councillor Park. Uh, uh, question from Councillor Taylor. Just a question of clarification. Uh, look, I'm, I'm happy to support this, but I'm just curious, given all of the reports that have already been done, two mm. sets of consultants' reports, both before and after the current treatment, what are we going to get for the $80,000 to investigate the appropriate solution, given that we've already got quite a bit? Happy for it to go forward. Bryson will be able to answer you know, that. But it's going to spend um, 80 grand to get what that we don't know already. So, so the, the next 80 grand and, and probably a little, um, I don't know if it's clearly uh, highlighted like that, but it's 80 grand initially for the start of the detailed design. So, depending on what option comes out of the workshop, is, is what we'll de carry on detailing design, and that's that would be for construction, so design for construction. So, 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 so yeah, that, that, that helps. That, that answers my yeah. question. So it's, it's not to investigate what we're no, actually going to no, do. No, it's no, no, to no. go toward what we decide yeah. we're going yes. to do. So, so you decide. So that's not clear. So make it really, really clear. You yeah. decide next week at the workshop what you want. Yeah. Traffic lights or roundabouts, and you've got that report there now that talks about the pros and cons of each option. So you've got the facts. You make a decision which one you which one you want. The money that's in here is for the detailed design, so that you get construction drawings, etc., that you can then go out to tender, give to a contractor, and say, "Build this." Through, through. Thank, thank you. That's through the chair. 
through the chair. Oh, it's been moved. Chair, by oh, sorry, uh, yeah. Councillor Williamson. Obviously, uh, with the workshop, no, I'm prepared to support this as well. Obviously, with the workshop next week, you know, the case and all these crashes is yet to be reviewed. As the full crash data is not available yet, will that be available next week? Or? Well, as part of the discussions? With the I'd workshop? like to think it, that yeah. it is. <laughs> I assume it would be. Yeah. Yeah. Wherever you've, you've got detail, I think it's fairly clear. We have an issue. Oh, sorry, excuse the pun. We have a, an issue here. So um, the crash data, I don't know how long that takes to come through. But um, yeah, we'll try and get that anyway, Councillor Williamson. In Councillor Body, once again, to try and think outside of the square. What would the cost of an underpass be, similar to the one put in by Bike Taupo out at Wairaki? Uh, what's an underpass worth, Dennis? Bullpark? Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Thank you. All right. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Guy, thank you very much. So it's been moved and seconded. One and two of that um, recommendation up there. All those in favour, please say aye. It's against. Carried. Right. Thank you, uh, Bryson and Clear. 5.4, Laboratory and Sampling Services. That, that Sorry, just while we're at it, that workshop this week, will uh, next week, will be a public workshop. So anyone that's interested, and I know there's a lot of people out there that are very, very interested about this topical subject, uh, are most welcome to come and listen to that uh, workshop. Right, 5.4. This is uh, Laboratory and Sampling Services contract. Good afternoon, team. Good afternoon, Mayor and Councillors. So firstly, I'll take the paper as read, but I'll give you a brief overview of that paper. Yep. Um, the laboratory sampling services contract will provide testing and sampling services across the three waters, uh, including solid waste, water, wastewater and stormwater, and that's there predominantly to meet our legislative requirements and also for operational and engineering support. Over the last year we've been working through quite a robust uh, contract renewal process which has included a review of the current service and followed by our ROI and RFP processes. And the outcome of that was to recommend awarding the contract to Eurofins ELS Limited for a proposed term of five years. This is a brief background on Eurofins. Um, they are a global network of laboratories in New Zealand. They operate out of our four main centres, Auckland, Wellington, Christchurch and Dunedin. And they work closely with 30 territorial authorities providing sampling and testing services in the area of drinking water compliance, effluent testing, stormwater and environmental resource consent monitoring, so exactly the same as what we'll be requiring. Um, they've got an extensive scope of accreditation and, an, and are actively involved in a number of working groups in the three water sector, uh, including um, with the Ministry of Health and updates to the drinking water standards. Um, Eurofins have committed to operating a local laboratory and as an organisation they employ lean methodologies to streamline their processes and maintain high quality standards. They've got two full-time staff dedicated to this and so the operational efficiencies and quality of operation is why they've come through as the leading supplier. So the total cost for this service over five years is in the order of 2.9 million including price escalations and contingencies but exclusive of GST. Um, the estimated cost of our existing service for 1920 is around $823,000. Therefore, we're looking at a savings of approximately $270,000 a year on the existing service. So, therefore, our recommendation is to accept the proposal for laboratory and sampling services submitted by Eurofins ELS for um, the sum stipulated in the paper for a year of five years, uh, for, sorry for a term of five years and happy to answer any questions on that. Thank you Nicola, <coughs> I appreciate uh, your item here this afternoon. Um, question, just a quick question, we've had an existing supplier for a number of years, mm -hmm. have they been advised of, of this? Uh, yes they have. And they, well, yeah. obviously, yeah, uh, how do I ask, okay or? Um, disappointed. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Cool. So we had a very strong response in our ROI process. So we selected the top three of those to go forward to the RFP and our existing supplier was not one of those. Right. But we were very fortunate that we had a really competitive response and there was and and that came from industry leaders in three water sector. So the we trusted our process through that and went with our top scoring parties. But yeah, they are disappointed but Okay. Yeah. Well, there's something yeah, we've talked this offline, but there's something yeah. I you know, thank them for their services and that sort of thing yeah. because they have done a a wonderful job over the last uh, few years, but I realise you know everything yep. moves on. So, yep. thanks, Nicola. Uh, Council Westman. Uh, so MD Century did actually put a proposal in, but it wasn't the yep. preferred ones. So the three that you've investigated were the ones with the final tick, and were they all uh, a five-year contract? It just seems like a long period of time where a number of things could happen. If we got an opt-out, obviously if the service isn't as good as what they've put forward? Uh, through the Chair, we have chosen a five-year term because all three parties committed to a local lab, but to set up a lab and resource it requires a significant period of time for a contract in order to meet the level of service that we need. So anything shorter than that, we probably would have impacted the quality of our submissions. So. We are proposing the five-year term with two potential two-year renewals, depending on how that service is performs. And like all our contracts, yeah. we some yeah someone oversees oversees the contract, and the uh, the contract is not performing. Correct. We have oh, you. we have oh, tight lucky. KPIs, oh, that, and we oh, will be oh. tracking that closely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, um, I think I had a hand over here first, but uh, Councillor Park. Um, yes, thank you. Um, Nicola, just around um, when we had our algal bloom um, incident a couple of years ago, yep. um, all the testing of that sort of incident, if it were to happen again, happened at these labs as opposed to being out of town, so we'll actually gain some efficiencies by having yep. all the testing done via these people. Okay. Yep. Answer that through the chair. We have a um, commitment from Eurofins to operate a local lab, and that will include any testing with rapid turnaround response. So that is our drinking water monitoring, any environmental monitoring such as the Lake Terrace mains failure, and they are happy to work with us on any other testing that we might need to be seen undertaken locally. As far as algal monitoring goes, that's quite a specialised test and that has always been outsourced out of Topol. But um, Eurofins is a network that expands around the globe and with the four other laboratories they have in the country, they, they can outsource, depending on what we need, because testing is very complicated, there's so many things that you can test, they will send it to the correct place and they offer an algal monitoring service as well. So. Yeah, that is efficiencies with having um, a big organisation. Yeah. Thanks, okay. Councillor Body. Nicholas alluded to this, and it's on page 71. We talked about a pr proposal for a potential two year, two by two extension. Should that be written into the recommendation? Seek <coughs> advice on that. Oh. Oh, sorry, um, Dennis. Through the Chair, Your Worship, those um, extensions of contract come back to Council anyway, yeah. um, anyway when, when the extension is due and seek a recommendation. I understand that, Mr Chairman. I'm just wondering if the company that gets this contract would be aware of the possibility of a two by two. Is it fair that they're advised of that now per that resolution? Uh, I think it would be quite clear in the contract, would it? Yeah. Sign the contract. So that'll be a term in the contract that they sign, and we sign as well, which says you've got five years, and then at the end of that period, back to council for approval for another two, and then another two. So that's standard for all of our contracts in this regard. This would be, um, yeah, it's not new. So it needs to be included in the, in the resolution. Cool. All right. Um, just a side question. Do we measure, uh, Nicola, for methamphetamine and that, like a lot of other um, councils are doing now? Um, no, we don't directly measure 
methamphetamine, but there is a project <laughs> that is being undertaken which includes topol. So right. we are in a roundabout way, but we yeah. don't currently include that. That won't be included in this contract. Okay, but this But there is a nationwide... ...tender uh, would have the ability, though? Uh, actually, requested? I think, I think the, the meth testing goes down to ES... Oh, EL, or what is it? <laughs> Yeah, um, oh, ESL, uh, that program off TV. Yeah, ESR. <laughs> ESR. Yeah. ESR. They go ESR, down to ESR. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Something and like that. Yeah. We, we do have minutes. some monitoring data. Yeah. So um, it is quite. You know, obviously the council will be very interested to see how prevalent that is. We all know it's, you know, prevalent, but it'd be just good to monitor it. And I know it is a topical conversation at local government in New Zealand. That, Mm -hmm. Councils are measuring uh, quite that quite, quite considerably now to, uh, to relay the information mm -hmm. to whoever. But um, anyway, sorry. So, sorry, sorry through the chair, just to add to that. Yeah. Um, yes, we are part of a study, and yes, we've been told that we'll get all of the results from the overall study, and we'll be party to to any findings of that right. that we can share. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much, uh, Nicola, uh, for your details, and Dennis for the detailed um, item here this afternoon. So. Uh, we're very comfortable moving ahead with this um, uh, particular, uh, and um, and I will send out an acknowledgement to the previous operators of this um, scheme, uh, and thank them for their good service. So, did I have a mover? No. Could I have a move, please? Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Seen by Councillor Williamson. All those in favour, please say aye. It's against. Carried. Thank you. Right. Uh, 5.5. Um, <coughs> the uh, uh, licence occupied fly line heap up to uh, reserve is now canned. Okay, good afternoon, Nathan. Yeah, good afternoon, Mayor and Councillors. Uh, this brief item is just to clean up some loose ends on the fly line application, which has been going on for um, around about a year now. So we're just looking for you, for the Council, to confirm some resolutions just to clear up those loose ends. Okay. So Chairman, before we do, could we get the dates right? Uh, Mr Murray, in regards of January 19, February 19, should there be February and January 20 at the bottom of the discussion? Yes, you are 100% correct. Thank you. Cool. <coughs> Thank you very much. Okay, it's pretty clear and concise there in that resolution. Uh, and the project is over. So, uh, do I have any questions? Oh, so Councillor Taylor? No. <laughs> <laughs> We're the wrong way around then. <laughs> Councillor Taylor. Just a couple of small points. Given um, at the conclusion comments you've got here, Nathan, um, widespread dissatisfaction, um, I'm just concerned that as a council we have a lessons learned opportunity from this that we don't go down this track. So you've got both us as a council, um, you and your team, local residents and no doubt the particular individual who wanted to engage in this activity all experiencing some degree of dissatisfaction. I'm just concerned that this has been a, a bit of an issue, that would be an understatement, that we've got some lessons learned that we don't go down this track again. Yeah. What if you could uh, speak to that, please? Yeah, uh, so immediately um, after this meeting, um, I've spoken to Kevin, um, and we do plan to put together a, a bit of a, a lessons learned, a, a, an issues paper on what, what's happened. Um, and I assume if SLT thinks it's worthwhile bringing toward before council, we'll do that as well. Um, this is one of those applications where Taupo's dichotomy as a tourist destination and balancing that with the local community expectations has is, is been quite a difficult discussion um, for the councils to to make a decision on what is the most appropriate use of that space. Cool, that would be excellent, um, Nathan, because you know obviously this won't be the last of the applications that come forward, and uh, as you say, it's a, a, a tourist destination, so. We're going to get these applications again. Be good to have a template there. Councillor Body. Mr Chairman, I think we saw this morning a presentation from some very professional people, extremely professional people in an activity that they want to have take place. If you compare that with what we've just worked through with 
the exercise, the difference is talk and cheese. I mean, it's just, it is so wide. And to see that destruction, and you've all seen the photographs of that reserve, to me was appalling. But I said this in a previous meeting, and I'm going to say it again. I was also concerned about the delivery from um, Enterprise Great Lake Taupo to get this thing to go through. Uh, I've got a transcript of comments that were made, which in a public meeting I'm not going to read out. Um, but I'm absolutely disgusted the pressure that, I suppose pressure might be stronger, it was put on those locals in that area by Enterprise. And I think if we're funding an organisation such as that, I know they're a trust, as I've said in the past, it's a pity some comments weren't made as to the actions that took place. Very good. Okay. There's a recommendation at the Council of Westerman. Look, it, and it most probably follows on from the disc golf uh, conversation from the other week. I, I voted against that because I'm concerned about the amount of effort that goes into it and the cost of drawing up lease documents where there's absolutely no upside for the council at a dollar a year or whatever the rental was going to be uh, for someone to go and set that up and not a lot of skin in the game two or three years down the track the project fails who has to do the clean up on that sort of thing and that's why I voted against that one and this one has the same sort of ring to it and thankfully it's all wound up now but I think we need to be careful going forward on what comes across our desk and how we handle it. Cool. All right. Appreciate the uh, appreciate the comments. I'm sure they're taken on board. Um, <coughs> right. Dead and buried. Mover, please. Oh, Councillor oh, through the chair. Williamson. I oh, just you know just I've taken you know, taken on board all the comment comments. Obviously, um, you know, I'm not one to recriminating. I think we'll learn from these exper experiences. Um, there was a process, you know, we went through. And I, I don't apologise for this part of it. I don't apologise for going through a process. And obviously, um, there was a lot of still a lot of work to be done. Obviously, you know, comparing the fly line to zip line, I agree. There's no perhaps comparison, but there was still a lot of work to be done um, with council, you know. And I, um, if it was to get over the line, so I think it's just, you know, we just just take it on board, and um, we probably drop the ball, perhaps uh, um, between April and September with the consultation process, but. Um, I think we all just to take personal, we all take collective responsibility as a governance, not just um, pass the ball. So, sure. yeah. and we certainly don't want to discourage uh, uh, anyone, any possible applicants coming through. You know, we're open for business. You know, let's let's uh, not doubt about that. We will look at any possible proposal, but the right steps have got to take place after that. So, Councillor Leonard. Through the chair, is there any requirement on the company to rectify the damage that's been done at that reserve? Uh, no, not to the best of my knowledge. Uh, I don't think the uh, the damage is is that extensive, to be honest. Um, the lines were cut through for surveying. Uh, most of the places that it went through was was not native bush or. or the best thing, and that enabled us to get in there, clear out a lot of rubbish, and has now opened up that for our operations team to go in and carry out more weed control in the future, if and when we do get in there to do some restoration in there. All right. <coughs> we have a mover for that recommendation. Moved by Councillor Leonard, seconded by Councillor Taylor. All those in favour, please say aye. Is against? Carried. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Nathan. Uh, right. 5.6, confirmation of the Civic uh, Building Design Scope. Mr Philip King. Good afternoon, Philip. Good morning, Your Worship. Good afternoon, Your Worship, uh, councillors. Uh, just back to you with the Civic Administration Building Project, and we've discussed... Uh, along the way that we were building a building to IL4 and we've talked along the way about removing the one level of underground parking and now just uh, we'd, in the original scope there was an option to include a cafe and a bus hub um, and uh, to be sort of talked through with the concept design as it got developed and as the concept design starting to unfold there's um, uh, no appetite for council to include a cafe or a bus hub in the building, so this is a resolution for you to formalise that decision. Very good. 
Okay, so it's fairly straightforward. Um, and then, yep, Councillor Mac. Can I can I just go for clarification because that's all cool, but we we do seem to keep bringing this word underground car parking back, which is a bit unusual. So it says here that two two um, if you like floors have gone with a saving of five five million, mm -hmm. but you're still using the word one underground, which we're not we're not using the word underground at the moment because we're yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's yeah. That was Correct. the agreement, so yeah. that we could actually be saving a lot more than five million. Correct. Yeah. So basement parking is the term that I should have used correctly. Oh, yeah. Basement. Yeah. It's not underground. It's basement. But it could happen to be underground, but it's basement. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the council council uh, Rankin. Not on this go -kart. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. And and the big thing is the bus. Stop just to reassure the people out there. Uh, the bus stop is still not off the agenda. It's you know, it's going to be part of, of that transport, transport strategy. strategy. Uh, and we just felt that uh, this wasn't the right location location for it. Where where it is the right location, who knows? But um, yeah, correct. So that's just to formalise that. All right. So through you, Mr. Chairman, if we're going to have a basement, um, a one-level basement. Um, and we've saved five or six million on having two level basements. Is this going to cost another five million? Is that about the price? The reason I raise it, and the other question I ask, is it still only going to be for the 30 fleet cars? The, the, through the chair, the resolution on the basement is done. This yeah. is just around the key, removal of the cafe and the bus hub. Yeah. You know, while we've got the chance, so the basement is still going ahead. Is that a five or six million dollar cost? The, the, the cost will become apparent as the concepts start to fold out and we give it to our QS and he starts to price it up for us. Also leading to the point, as I've said in previous council meetings, that if we're spending $5 million on parking for 30 cars, is that a good use of ratepayers' money? Oh, I think that'll be debated. Uh, yeah, that's already been debated and will be continue to be debated, but it's not, not the subject of the debate today as far as the resolution is uh, concerned in front of us. Um, okay, Philip, uh, no other, nothing you want to add? No. Okay. All right, do I have a mover? Please move for Council, sorry, Councillor Rankin, seconded by Councillor Guy. All those in favour, please say aye. It's against, carry. Yeah, just before you, you go, you Philip, um, sorry, John, <laughs> <laughs> I believe you are doing Iron Man. I am doing yeah. Iron Man. Uh, th next weekend, so all the very best for that. Thank you. And when you have finished that, come and see me and I'll show you how to put on some weight. Right. <laughs> we'll do a sheer thing. <laughs> no, you're looking great. You're looking great, mate, and all the very best uh, for that. And this is your first? It's you my first anything since school. Well, wow, from the heart. first time caller. Mm -hmm. You wish you just moved, sorry, you've just moved in seeking something and voted. I'm abstaining. Oh, sorry. It's interesting that the ACC are building a building in Hamilton, or the Tiny, I think it is, a building, a building for ACC in Hamilton for them to lease. I'm sticking my principles of leasing rather than building, so I'm abstaining from the votes to do with this. So I do welcome the removal of what okay, this well resolution Okay, we'll all done. the resolutions that come forward regarding the building. You abstain to them all. Okay, good as God. Roger. Okay, thank you for the information. I'm sure the, um, the uh, ladies oh, here, here, here. So, uh, yeah, all the best, uh, Philip, uh, on that early start. And, of course, uh, Gareth is doing it as well. So, yeah. All right. OK. Uh, that was all done right, wasn't it? Um, <coughs> what are we up to? 5.7? So it's trying in agreement. Uh, uh, good afternoon, yes. Mayor, Your Worship, and uh, Councillors. So um, last Tammy. month... We came to you and we presented three of the triennial agreements that were ready at that point. I yeah. said one of the triennial agreements that we're still going to have a meeting. They had that meeting last week and uh, so the agreement has been approved and sent through to us and uh, so this is what this report is about, to ask council, to recommend to council to adopt it. We are a non-primary party to this agreement and it remains essentially the same as the one for the last triennial. As I mentioned in my report, the major difference is just the frequency of meetings and, well, a chapter detailing our strategic priorities for this triennium. But again, for both 
that the frequency of meetings and the frequency of assessments as for pri primary parties not doesn't affect us in any way. Cool. Thank you, Timmy, and, and myself and the and the CEO. Uh, we had the phone conference to finalise yes. uh, this last week. Last week. Yes. So it's a pretty standard uh, thing that we do every triennium. Um, we're only subsidiaries or whatever. What, you had a better word for it <laughs> to the to the agreement. Uh, but we do, you know, Hawke's Bay is, is a, a, a friends of ours, and um, so uh, we're more than happy to um, to um, sign up to this. Not that it commits us to any time or any no. monetary value at all. Questions? No? No questions straightforward? Happy to, someone happy to move? Councillor Park, seeing the by Councillor Guy. All those in favour, please say aye. Is against? Gary. Thank you. Thank you very much, Timmy. Nice to see you. Okay, we have 5.8, Gen, uh, Council's January Performance Report. So, Mr Chairman, the team Mr. will come CEO. up and um, take you through page by page of the report. Um, there's just three things that I'll highlight there, uh, mainly because they're of significant interest to me. The first is the um, the playground at Tongaro Domain. Um, you'll see there that um, we've selected a contractor um, and starting to consult with some of the neighbouring properties around that, that playground. Um, and we are planning a consultation day down at the site um, where we can get um, both users, i.e. children and um, parents and, and other interested parties to provide their feedback and ideas and stuff like that. So that's coming up soon. Um, actual construction of the playground um, will be about mid-year, about July. We're just trying to work through timings of that around Winter Festival and other things, but it'll be through the, the middle of the year. Um, and then obviously, and you've spoken about Ironman with um, Mr King doing it, um, obviously we have that um, next weekend, um, which is, is all to, um, going well. Um, the bike course, or the courses have changed um, to previous years, so there are new people who are affected by change to, to vehicle movements and the like, um, primarily Rifle Range Road and Taharipa Road, um, which haven't been affected in the past. Um, consultations occurred with all those people and, um, and so far um, fairly positive um, responses, um, which is good. Um, the Ironman have had a slight impact, of course, from coronavirus. Um, so anybody, any Chinese athletes have um, have been unable to to enter New Zealand to um, to compete. Um, so Ironman have offered those athletes either refunds or um, the ability to be able to transfer their entry to another race um, around the world. Um, and of course, a large number of athletes who were transiting through China have had to change their plans. So um, some of them have have um, pulled out as well. Um, that said, it is um, the biggest field that Ironman's had in Taupo um, ever to date, um, primarily because of the extra um, athletes doing the, the half Ironman on the same day, the 70.3 competition. Um, and the third and final one that I'll just point out, because um, again it's of, of interest to, to myself and to, to staff, um, is the um, just the note in the last paragraph there that phase one of the um, IT project that we undertook um, with Technology One is complete. Um, that was the HR and payroll um, components of the system. Um, and thankfully, and you'll be all happy to, to hear that we avoided any Nova Pay type issues um, and it was relatively seamless. We did have one or two minor issues, but for the scale of the project, it was, um, it was relatively seamless. Um, the significant part of that project starts from now, which is into our finance, regulatory and document management systems. Um, so that's a major piece of work for quite a large team, um, transferring all of that information through. Um, the positive for the community and our customers, though, is that it's that part which starts to provide some of the real benefits for them in terms of, um, of what they see from a customer service delivery perspective, um, you know, being able to access our information and, and have, it, have things real time. So um, that's all I'll, unless there's any questions, the rest of my report, we'll give through to the team to, to walk through page by page. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Just two issues, Mr Chairman, for me. Yeah. Firstly, I received the notification that the fly out to the properties in regards to the routes of mm -hmm. Ironman. Is there any need to put it either into the town for those that don't want to necessarily come through to do that bypass? Because as a local, I know where it is and know how to use it, but others might not. So the signage, um, and I know Mr Lewis is part of this as well, the signage on the on the course does push people up to around those points and around the bypass, fine. so that'll be really clear, including signage um, to get to the hospital and the like as well. Okay, that's good. The second one was in regard to your playground. <coughs> um, letters have been dropped to the neighbouring properties 
and key use of the program, noting closure and engagement opportunities, which comes first. And I think we had a very successful one round at uh, Acacia Bay mm -hmm. where the community got together and we ended up with what we got. So are we envisaging doing something like that? Um, we're just designing that, that project up at the moment, so the consultation of that, um, and it'll be there'll be something very similar to that, yes. Yep. Um, so this is the current site, the current playground site, which is an extension of that. So there's um, is it seven seven hundred and fifty thousand top of my head? Eight fifty, eight fifty thousand on the budget to um, to improve that playground. So when you say the neighbouring properties, like the commercial boys across the road, correct? Commercial, commercial across the road, the um, police, the our own properties of the museum and the like. Thank you. Um, through the chair, uh, fortunately, this stage of the year we're ahead of plan. Um, I say that because with everything happening, you're not quite sure what the rest of the year is going to deliver. Um, we're ahead um, activity-wise in the building area. We're ahead on investment income. Um, but, for example, the share markets in the world dropped about 3% overnight. Um, what we are in the process of doing is um, forecast for the year. Um, about this time of the year, it's an ideal opportunity to try and predict where we're going to be at year end. Um, as you can see, we've got a surplus of over three million at this particular stage. It'd be good if we could finish the year with a surplus of three million. But um, part of that is that um, some of the activities that occur are um, when we do the budgets are phased evenly over the 12 months, but depending on um, activity related to the weather and things of that nature, then um, uh, it doesn't necessarily match evenly uh, month after month. Uh, others are phased accordingly. So that's why the, the forecast process is quite important at this time of the year to give everybody a more um, clear view as to where we're heading. But um, all indications are that uh, we will end up the year ahead of plan. It's just a matter of to, to what extent. And, and it varies across each of the activities um, as you can already see in the uh, group of activities which the team will be talking to you about, some of them are ahead of plan, some of them behind plan, but that can also be related to the work programs that take place. Um, so basically, uh, we're in a good spot at the moment, um, touch wood, but it continues for the rest of the year. Um, but you know, happy to answer any questions that um, you may have. Oh, no, we need to keep spending. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah. No, that's all right. No problems at all. Thank you very much. Any, any questions, Alan? Just very quick as a point of interest. Alan, you've mentioned about, um, where the hell are we, not loan repayments, the other one, to do with depreciation because the revaluations were lower than forecast. Yeah. It's what interesting. Actually, what actually happens is when we um, do the budgets, which start around about uh, October, November, we actually have to, um, well, let's take, take it back a step. Every three years, there's a physical valuation done on part of our assets, whether it's buildings, whether it's um, uh, three waters, whether it's roading. But each year, we actually have to anticipate what those valuations are going to be. So um, when we did the plans for this year, um, it was um, buildings that um, were had the physical valuation come through at the 30th of June, we predicted a increase in the value of those buildings greater than what the actual valuation came in at. Um, so we set our depreciation based on our estimated value. Um, as you can see by uh, the work that um, I shared with you last Tuesday, the growth in the commercial building side was nowhere near as high as the growth in the residential. Um, we overestimated what the growth would be in our um, buildings, etc., um, and hence we dep budgeted depreciation higher than what is actually required. Um, I, I think we keep. I, I'm keeping my eye on it because um, I can see some good buy opportunities. <laughs> Yeah. 
but um, we'll just no pressure. we'll just watch it, yeah, as to um, uh, what actually happens. Okay, thanks very much, Alan. Um, that's cool. Uh, so, sorry, just for clarification, yeah. because sometimes our papers we get one lot to start and then it might be there next time. So to do with um, the treasury report, yes, is that going to be taken at the last as we gone through other cost centres? Sorry, well, I, that, I can that do that, that now. Oh, okay, because it's sometimes sometime it's earlier in the agenda. Yeah. Sometimes it's. Yeah. Um, as I said earlier, that the investment return um, is above uh, what we budgeted. Um, my concern is that with the falling interest rates, and we have a significant amount of money on term deposit um, because corporate bonds are not available in the marketplace, that um, our uh, positive return versus budget is probably going to diminish over the rest of the year. You know, when you look at <coughs> TD rates now at 2.7, um, we were budgeting for a 3% yield uh, on the um, TEL fund. We, we're still achieving 3.6, but um, it's when you've got uh, TD rates, as I say, well below 3, um, I'll just have to be a bit more active in the share market. 50 you should have 50% <laughs> equities anyway, shall we? Before, before, before Alan goes on, on page 127, I have a question in regards of who the hell are we? 127, we've got the TILF fund investment portfolio. At the list at the bottom, we've got property at 2.5, which I assume is the RSA building. That's the RSA land, yes. The RSA land. Yes. Uh, I'm having difficulty working out that if that's an investment, at the months before, we had 61 million in that account. If we take the 2.5 off, it comes down to 59.1, and then it's shown somewhere else at 2.5. If we ever, so we use, if we use, do we use the TIL fund to buy the RSA build? It's part of the investment of the yeah. TIL fund. Yeah. At some stage, we'll be bringing a paper to you to consider. Um, the actual physical work needed to turn it into a car park and whether in fact at that p particular point of time the assets should move into council's books out of the TEL fund, but that's a separate discussion. What, what John's saying is 61 should have gone down to and a half? Well, what, no, what I'm saying is for, for the end of October, November, June, we had 61 in the TEL fund. If that has just gone in to make another 2.5, the 61.6 would come down to 59.1. And just in, if if it was 61 we've added 2.5, I would have thought it would have gone to 63. No, out of the 61.6 million, two uh, and a half of it okay. is, has Perhaps. been spent on that bit of land. Yeah, so it's still sat there. Yeah. It's, it's an asset within the books of so TL. Yeah. 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 Having said that, it might have gone up in value already. Eh? <laughs> you never know. You never know. All right. Um, Thanks, Alan. Democracy and planning. Investments. Investments. Thank you, Tina. So, in terms of finances, um, there's nothing um, untoward there. That's all tracking pretty good. And then the projects. Um, again, most of those you're aware of. Um, district plan. So we'll be doing a workshop in March, just bringing you up to speed on that. Um, we've talked about the annual plan. Uh, the transport strategy, so again, um, some work's been happening around that and we'll be coming back to you again in terms of um, some workshops, to probably towards more towards the beginning of April. Um, haven't received any information back on the um, Healthy Rivers plan change. And um, again, workshops in relation to the long-term plan and the strategies. Um, probably end of March, beginning of, of April, and the grants and partnerships policy review is going to be in the um, risk and assurance um, agenda for next month. So happy to uh, take any questions. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, Tina, any questions regarding democracy and planning? No. Community services. Um, Mr. Brian Fox. Thank you, Your Worship. Good afternoon, councillors. Um, Really not m much more to add to what Gareth's got in his uh, opening address in his report. 
Um, he talks about the staffing issues uh, and the success we're having in that space and filling jobs in the building area. I've mentioned that before in previous conversations. Uh, he talks about Project Quantum and the fact we're moving into a new module shortly. Um, that uh, impacts heavily in my area and the Redditch area. Uh, so one of the key concerns for me is just making sure that we keep the business as usual stuff happening as well as our development in that space. It sort of lends itself to that whole resilience of our business and business continuity planning, which we're heavily involved in right now. Um, in that space, we have engaged contractors on an as-and-when required basis, both in terms of legal and in the building area. You know that Ella has left us uh, from the attorney level, but I don't know whether there's any news on that. No movement there yet. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, really business as usual. Uh, one of the better terms is never usual, but... Happy to answer any questions in that just, uh, just on that position, so I know it's operational, that the maternity leave, <coughs> would we get someone in on a short-term contract or do we outsource it all because that is quite expensive, isn't it? So we, we have outsourced as required the transactional elements of that role. Right. And we will cope with the internal, the, the higher stuff internally. Uh, a lot of that work occasionally does go out to Simpson and Grierson, as you well know, you worship for various things. Um, so not unusual in that space. Um, yeah, uh, um, Ella has given us um, some assurances about a desire to come back, and I'm looking forward to, to that happening. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. Very good. All right, um, any questions of Brian, sorry? There he goes. Thank you, Brian. Dylan, community facilities. Afternoon all, uh, just on the numbers and make a point, we're, it's not unfavourable, it's 0, 0.0. 0. Yeah. So please see it as so favourable, it's is positive. That, is that positive or neutral? We'll say neutral, but I still see it as a positive, Your Worship. Where's Alan, the accountant? Uh, <laughs> I've got to hold on to that. <laughs> um, the donut's looking okay. Uh, Gareth's already mentioned some of the projects that are there. Uh, Great Lake Walkway, just an update, the antisocial behaviour by some of our locals towards our contractors isn't featuring as much uh, since the media campaign going through uh, and I believe there's been a little bit of a tour going out on to have a look at the site. They're on C75 property at the moment coming around Kaiwaka Point uh, so the Hapu actually took a bit of a tour up onto the property and had a look uh, and it looks smart. It looks really good uh, once the bush hammering and some of those other techniques around um, branding it is going to be pretty pretty cool. Uh, you'll see we've got one red blob sitting in there and that is a Motutere Recreation Reserve Management Plan. Uh, that is, uh, there is a, what would you call it? It's a difference of opinion between our leasee and ourselves and so as a result we've ceased our work around the Reserve Management Plan with the Māori Heritage Study being complete but the Reserve Management Plan is still sitting there uh, to work through while we try and maintain or rebuild that relationship with, with the, the leasee. So Other than that, that, sorry, just on that, is that onto an external party or are we doing that in-house or...? Um, he's exploring his options. Right. Um, he still, as I say, the, the leasee has a difference of opinion of what we have in place and so our team's working alongside him and his advisors to find some pathway forward. And and do you mind, and, and probably this is probably a later conversation, where the, where's the status of reverting that land back from, to the iwi? That currently sit, that conversation sits with the Crown, so Department of Conservation through their Minister are having conversations. Yep. Um, we've offered support to sit in those conversations, but as yet that's not been taken any further. OK. Thanks, John. Cobb All right, thanks very much. No questions, Adon? No? Good. Water, Kevin. Uh, so through the chair, there's, there's nothing really to add on water other than uh, what's been written there. The, the reds are the same reds um, predominantly. Our non-compliance for protozoan compliance, so UV, the things that we've got planned to do. Um, and the other one is just the time frames around the Lake Terrace um, um, upgrade there for the membranes. And Tadahonga is still working. We're working through that. So happy to take any questions, but otherwise I can move on to transportation. Yeah, just quickly, Adam Murray's mentioned this month that wasn't in October. Is that done monthly, Adam Murray? Uh, mentioned whereabouts, sorry. Uh, underwater. Underwater, yeah. Right at the bottom, first page. They're all done probably fortnightly. 
Probably he just, said, just yeah. the reason I raised it wasn't and then go back further in October. I can't remember seeing it in October, so yep. ends my question. Okay, we'll have a look at that. Yes, at least. Transport. <coughs> uh, so transportation, um, just a couple of updates there. So uh, Hawker Falls is out to tender at the moment and that'll be closing on the 6th of March. Um, so we did the landscaping last uh, end of last year um, and we're ready to, to move on to the actual footpath. So that's the extension all the way to Hooker Falls. Uh, Marpa Road foot, uh, footpath, um, the tenders have now closed and uh, we're seeking clarification um, on some of those, uh, the, the, the leading tender. Um, and then hopefully we can just um, let that out because it's um, below budget and it's below 500k, so we'll just run through Gareth for that. Cool. Councillor Westerman. Just remembering a little bit of history there with the water runoff down to Tom Condon's old place. It, that's obviously all included in, in hand. Yes, yeah, so through the, I, I don't know, I haven't seen the detailed design, but we were looking at Kerbin Channel and, and we're fully aware of the amount of water that goes through there. Yep. How, sorry, how far up Mark for Road does it go? It's going up to Acacia Heights Drive. Right, okay. Councillor Taylor. In the context of all that budget, I know this is a minutia but it just grated me when I read it the right. cost overrun for the fence on the Kinlock Road footpath $65,000 I've, I've actually driven past it on the weekend and if that's a $65,000 fence heaven help us I mean that's outrageous in my view yeah, no I don't know enough of the detail of it I can't find out and let you know you know it's just a, yeah, if you have a look at it it's yeah. a wooden paling fence but for 65 grand I'd want to see gold nails <laughs> are, they, are they not gold? <laughs> here he is, he's popped up he's arrived <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, through you to your worship the fence was in the order of 15k I think it was the primary cost overrun was due to the proximity vertically of the services that were in the berm um, the original design provided for more cut um, to even out the, the path um, when they started digging they found that the telecom services were far closer to the service than what they anticipated and that resulted in a change in the design at the time that led to the cost overruns that's fine, but that's not what's written in the paper. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> very good. Thank you very much. Uh, wastewater. Uh, have we done wastewater? Yeah, yeah no, no wastewater. wastewater. Um, I suppose just a, a comment that um, CAMEX are finishing the in June, um, the carbon dosing and um, the work down in Tūrangi, uh, which has um, been ongoing for a little while. And the Kinlock irrigation is on site in March. Um, the program completion is late June, and it'll take probably a couple of months to commission that. So that's the um, that'll solve our problems of the nitrification um, in our disposal fields and the overflows. Cool. Solid waste. Nothing to report on solid waste and stormwater. And it's going um, everything sticky boo basically. Obviously, the collections are sort of come right. I think the collections are coming right. I think Gareth has um, played a big part in that, um, bringing up their CE and, and um, working through that at the CE to CE level. Um, but right. there has been some marked improvements, yes. So we had a, um, a number of conversations with um, with Enviro Waste, as Kevin says, at their, their chief executive level. Um, as a result of those conversations, they have um, put extra staff and extra trucks into Topol. Um, and are currently working with our um, asset managers around a, a full review of the of the a first principles review of the um, solid waste activities. So, what they're saying is, look, there may be some elements of the um, collections which need to go to different <coughs> days to even them out. So, rather than being all busy on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and nothing later in the week, we might need to even that out a bit more, a bit more, as well as having the extra resource. But it's a um, I guess a signal of the increased number of dwellings are therefore rubbish in the district is that these things are changing, particularly some of those those collection days. But um, yeah, since that conversation and them having extra trucks on board, the the problems, the ongoing problems that we were having have stopped, which is good. Do you How long to go on that contract, sir? 
Yeah. It's about another two or three years. Okay. Um, but we're looking at Brent's looking at bringing a workshop up to you very shortly around um, around what you might want to do in the solid waste area going forward. Obviously, there's a big lead in time if you do wish to change, you know, to from wheelie bins to what sort of recycling you want to do and things like that. Mm. Councillor Body. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the fire, the uh, the landfill. Originally, I was told it um, could have been a lithium battery. Was it? And, and I also mentioned combustion, which I think is indicated here. Has the cause actually been worked out yet? Uh, through the chair, no, the, the cause, I think we're always um, going to struggle to find that absolute cause because it is a landfill, um, but we are, you know, we're highly likely that it was a lithium battery uh, in that space because that has caused fires in other areas, so they think, so it's pretty hard to really define it. So through you, Mr Chairman, is that something we need to work on, an education of what can and can't be recycled? But I don't know of anyone within the district that would go and picking up lithium batteries unless there's a place at the at the landfill when you drop your bottles off. That, certainly that's something that um, Brent's been working on and something he's working on nationally as well as a whole lot of education around those types of issues. Yeah. Stormwater? Uh, nothing to report. Nothing to report, thank you. Thanks Kevin. Economic development, John. Okay, so obviously we have uh, a minister in town who's going to make some sort of announcement on Thursday, um, which you're all invited to. Not sure what it is. Um, we've We've been having, we commenced our economic development portfolio meetings with councillors Rankin and Guy. We've also, in, um, Anna has joined us from um, international relations as well, so we've put it all together. Um, I think they've been going pretty well. We've met twice now, um, so I guess some work will come out of that in the near future. Um, the And I guess the other thing is the delegation that was, that Jess bought proposal that was brought here is obviously still on hold until further notice. Um, yep, that's what I've got. All right, thank you, John. Any questions of John? No? Okay, all done. No final questions? All right. A um, recommendation there? Could I have a move? Please, thank you, Councillor Westman, seconded by Councillor Park. All those in favour, please say aye. It's against. Carried. Okay, number five. Point nine, proposed amendment, Mangakino Paokani, representative group, terms of reference. Good afternoon. Tina. Thank you. As you recall, <coughs> the last council meeting we had some discussion around the um, membership of this group and there was some suggestion that given um, the complexity of the makeup there that uh, we should be looking at um, both a Maori and a Marae representative. So this paper allows um, that discussion and um, change to terms of reference if you so wish. Very good. Okay. So I think that suggestion uh, basically came from the councillor domiciled out there, Councillor Truman, uh, uh, which uh, made uh, sense to me. I don't think uh, there's too much adverse reaction around the table for that. Pretty straightforward. Okay, could I have a mover please? Thank you, Councillor Westerman, seconded by Councillor Williamson. All those in favour, please say aye. It's against. Carried. Thank you, Tina. 5.10 is the local adoption of the uh, local governance statement. Um, yep, thank you, Your Worship. Again, this is um, one of those things we need to review post, um, post the local government elections. And you'll note from the attachment, the draft there, that um, there's a track change with some suggested changes. Um, happy just to take any um, comments that you don't agree with rather than go through page by page. Yeah, no problem. Okay, thank you very much. Tina, any questions or any changes? Yeah, no, that's right. Can <laughs> Councillor Ta Taylor has actually read this one twice. Um, so, Councillor Taylor, have you got anything to add? No, I've already spoken to uh, Tina prior to this, and oh, I'm comfortable with what we've got. Good. Thank you very much. All right. No other questions of Tina? All right. We have a recommendation there that we adopt the draft, uh, well, we adopt the draft, Taupo District Council Local Governance Statement, 2019-2022, moved by Councillor Body, seconded by Councillor Guy. All those in favour, please say aye. Is against? Carried. 5.11, Council Engagements. The meeting dates there. Yes, that's correct. Have we got any changes to those, Tina? Um, no, nothing that I'm aware of at the moment. Okay. 
and uh, um, there's some recommendations there that um, that we appoint Councillor Guy uh, uh, to um, if she's available. Um, Councillor Guy has indicated her willingness uh, to be part of the Audit and Risk Committee, uh, a Risk and Assurance Committee. She had a name change uh, for that. There, um, Zone Two. Do I have any takers for Zone Two? Uh, over in Tauranga, it's a four-day meeting. Is it? No, is it? <laughs> How long do they take, Tina? Uh, it's a, a one day. One day. Just a okay. Day. One, yes. Very good. Any takers? Councillor Mack? No? That's ringing. Okay, so we might just have to leave that vacant vacant at the moment and put our apologies in, perhaps. Yep. Oh, I am mindful. Um, we do get pulled from pillar to post, but Zone 2 is, is, is one that we don't really regularly tend, and so we might just have to have some further discussions about that, whether there's a roster system. What's that, sorry? Um, yeah, yeah, I was going to have a chat to you about maybe um, a roster system. Yeah, so to go. Do get. Yeah, because they are good. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Very good. Okay, so just we put a, what do we do there? Just say Send nothing? an apology through. Send an apology through, okay. Good. Um, Council approves the attend. Oh, so uh, Sister Cities New Zealand 2020 uh, conference being held in Ashburton. So um, I wasn't too sure if anyone was interested in that. I think further information has been gathered regarding that one, and uh, we'll possibly put our apology unless you you want to go as uh, chair international relations. On, on 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 some expert advice I received earlier today. I, I'm not quite sure it's worth trip to Ashburton. I think there are other ways of um, gaining that intel. Okay, cool. Very good. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Park. So three and four uh, we will take out, or whatever. Yep. Whatever we do with that. Okay, can I have a move please for the, the rest of the scenario? One and two. Yep, thanks Councillor um, Leonard, and seconded by Councillor Taylor. Right, where are we now? Portfolios, is it? Members reports, 5.12. The last on the agenda. Uh, members reports, do we want to go through? Has anyone got any, any members reports, burning members reports they want to bring up? Just the, body. The, the two issue one I've already brought up in regards to Walkway, very, very happy with what they're doing from an access Taupo point of view. But our last access meeting, we've got some major problems with persons using um, the disability car parts, particularly in supermarkets, that's private land, but if we had a bit of a delegation, when Pack and Safe appears to be quite bad, to go along and actually explain to them so they can probably self-police. And unfortunately, they blatantly pull up in their cars, get the kids and go into the supermarkets, and that's not going down too well, so I'm not quite sure how to handle that. I just don't know how people do that. I just don't know how they do it. You know, it's wonder. But anyway, uh, but it does happen. You're dead right. You're dead right. Whether whether uh, it could be a uh, whether your committee or uh, it could be worth going and talking to those uh, people at the supermarkets. Uh, a wonderful people. That, that's that's easily done. But the power of delegation is who you take. And I think even if the mayor or the deputy mayor or an officer of maybe I know Rose Prisk is very active in that area. It just needs to have an authority behind it to try and get the necessary. Now we've got these things up on the shelves about wet wipes, why don't we have them, get them to put those signs up in regards to the car parking? Yeah. No, fair enough too. So the CEO's nodding his head. So he, he's quite happy to go? He, no? Well, uh, probably a mural thing, I'd <laughs> to be honest. Delegation. <laughs> <laughs> More than happy to attend. Okay, no problem. No, well, um, it's a good idea. Um, a wonderful guy, the new owner of Pack and Save, I'm sure. It'd be very common. Well, actually, the sign, the marking is actually quite faded now too. Have you noticed? Yeah, it's a busy car park. That it's a shocker. But anyway, um, it's um, it's probably timely that um, we have had a few people part of something and, and also countdown. Right. Any other members' reports? Councillor Rankin. 
Perhaps I should mention, um, in terms of economic development, that the thing that the three of us have been talking about at the meeting that Mr Ridd um, talked about is the destination management plan, and it's an absolutely huge undertaking. It'll take about three years to complete that plan, but once we have, or actually once you start the work on it, the government will let you access the international visitors levy account which means that we can start some of the development we might want to do. It, it plots out that development, it's very consultative, it's very time consuming and it, we have to contribute an amount of money to it, but Thank it you. does give us a great return. So we are talking about it's a huge, huge job, which okay. um, Jess has under control at the moment. But we will be coming back to you with much more detail and a request for funding. Cool. Our part of it. Everyone contributes. Is, it, is that the TIF fund you're talking about, or is that what is? No, no something to MB one. Is it okay? An MB fund of a million dollars over three years. Yep. Yeah. And so fifty, twenty-five, twenty-five, and um, sets out that framework as um, Councillor Rankin has just um, said, with local government. Um, you know, um, basically, it's looking at a, a national and a regional framework that. Um, has everything from conservation management strategies, national park management plans, um, iwi, hapu, land transport, uh, labour market strategies and regional economic and tourism strategies. So it's really a framework for anything moving forward. So it, it, okay. it's a huge, oh, cool. quite appreciate daunting when you read through it. I appreciate that, but if there's central government money, you know, it might as well be in the, in the line-up anyway. Well, it'll allow us yeah. to do some of the things we... Yeah. desperately want to do without paying as much for them. Great. All right, just looking down the portfolio, has anyone else got anything new to add? No? More straightforward. All right. Um, sorry. Uh, yes. I, I oh, Councillor Guy, yeah. sorry. I attended an EGLT um, workshop um, uh, with Burl and I won't go into details at the moment but I'm sure that EGLT would be keen to um, present in, in a workshop situation the findings yep. of that. Sure. Yes, Is that the latest, yeah. latest sort of infometrics? No. Oh, housing one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We've got yeah. that um, programmed in the workshop. Yeah. We were talking to the housing there. Oh, the, that's right, yeah. Uh, the Waikato Mural Forum, the housing uh, conversation mm -hmm. was quite extensive, um, so um, there's quite a bit happening. Yes, in that the more space the more you delve into it, yeah, the the bigger it becomes. Yes, so that's right. I think it's so. it's yeah. a huge piece of work, also. But yeah. um, you know, moving forward, I think it's it's yeah. Going if you haven't to got that work done too, it's so important because the minister's going to say come and say to us. Well, housing, yeah, we've got a problem with housing. Well, what do you want? Mm -hmm. you know, what, what, what is exactly mm -hmm. what you want? And if you've got a report quite clear and detailed, this is what we actually want, I think um, uh, certainly helps. All right, no other members' reports? Thank you, Councillor Guy. <coughs> I have a move, please, that receive the report. Thank you, Councillor Westman, seconded by Councillor Guy. All those in favour, please say aye. Those against?